the two assassin brothers then proceeded around their home, room by room, launching their onslaught on their relatives. Some things that happen in our world may be so odd, that you could believe they only occur in dreams. Such things as your brother or sister slaughtering your entire family, do not happen in reality. Is it even possible to do that? I was afraid that my brother would kill my family, that I dialed 911 and me. On July 22, 2015, police in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, received a report about the incident. This is the story of the teen brothers who killed five of their family members. Around 11.30 p.m., on July 22, 2015, Oklahoma police were alerted to 709 Magnolia Court by a 911 call, made by 12-year-old Daniel Bever, who said that his brother was attacking his family. Screaming, commotion and a male voice were heard in the background, before the line went dead. No one at home would answer the phone, so they dialed David Bever's phone number to find out what was going on. David and his 44-year-old wife April, lived in a comfortable suburban house with their seven children, aged 18 to 2 years. David was a successful businessman. The couple had two children. David worked in technology. At the same time, April was a stay-at-home mother, who homeschooled her children. All of the family's activities were done jointly, and they maintained their privacy. The first time I took my children to the park, they would rush up to their fence and attempt to speak with them, but they would simply turn around and return to the park. She described herself as, tired, pleased, and grateful, in one of her blog posts. A second statement stated that she would not trade her children for anything in the world, saying in part, I would never give up having any of my children to have more money. Their personalities are extraordinary, and the world will benefit from their efforts. Later, the two assassin brothers went from room to room, murdering their family members. Their father was beaten with a rough object, before they stabbed him 28 times. It was discovered that Christopher and Victoria were hiding in the bathroom. They were requested to come out because he was being attacked. When Michael came into the room, and feigned being assaulted to persuade his younger brother to open the door, Robert mauled him. I was in Daniel's room down the hall, and he graciously permitted me to come in with him there. So while he was talking on the phone with the cops, I snatched his phone, which is now mine to use. When the police arrived at this time, they discovered blood on the sidewalk and on the front step of the residence. While they were beating on the door, they noticed Michael pulling Crystal back into the house, with her younger brothers wailing in the background. The torso, neck, arms, and legs are all included. Autumn, a two-year-old girl, who was found sleeping peacefully upstairs during the tragedy, was the only member of the family, who did not suffer any injuries. The murdering brothers had escaped through the back door, and hid in the woods. Still, police could track them down swiftly with the help of canine hounds, and both were apprehended and taken into custody for questioning. During their detention, another detective observed that one of the children, presumably Robert, had a sneer on his face. Clothing that has visible skin on it is ripe. When the police arrived to conduct an investigation, they noticed two young males rushing out of the back entrance of the residence, they were arrested. In the woods behind the house, canines hunted down Robert Beaver, 18 years old, and his younger brother, 16 years old. Much to the dismay of the entire family, five members of the family were hurt. Only the family's two-year-old baby was unhurt, and the family's older sister, aged 13, was taken to the hospital. Detectives examined the brothers separately, as they attempted to determine what may have motivated them to commit such a heinous act, and why they appeared to be happy about what they had done. However, Michael's interview has been made public, while Robert's interview has not. In his denial to the police, he claimed that it was his brother's idea and that he didn't want to participate. But Robert threatened him, saying, your older brother has told me he wants to be famous, and you guys are making these plans. I'm sure you won't say something like that, will you? With him, I want to go through with it, because as far as I'm concerned, he's going to do it regardless of what I say. He also revealed that he had ordered body armor and gathered knives, months before the incident, when we first talked about it. He has also had some guns sent to a neighboring shop, and 3,000 rounds of ammo delivered to his home. Chris was in my possession. In an addition to five counts of first-degree homicide, Michael and Robert were each charged, with one count of assault and battery with the intent to kill. Michael was 16, and the offense did not prevent him from being charged as an adult. 
Crystal, their sister who had survived the attack, testified against the two, claiming that Michael and Robert had talked about destroying their family and taking money for a year before the attack. Crystal stated that her brothers respected mass shooters and wanted more of them to be able to get away with their crimes, according to Crystal. Crystal said she had informed her mother of her brother's troubling behavior, but that her mother had rejected her concerns by stating that boys will be boys. Robert and Michael first entered not guilty, pleased to the accusations against them. Still, Robert eventually altered his request to be guilty, to escape being sentenced to death for his crimes. He was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences, without the possibility of release in each case. Robert attempted to hang himself with a bedsheet, in July 2016, but was apprehended by a jail officer during a routine check and was cut down, before he could do any damage. In April 2018, Michael's trial got underway, and Robert testified in his brother's defense, claiming that, it was all their fault and that Michael was merely following along with his plans. His assertion, that all the deaths were his fault and that Michael was not liable for any of the deaths. For today, Robert was on the witness stand, testifying in his brother's defense. In his confessional statement, Robert did admit that Michael had helped him by tricking his brothers into unlocking the door for him. The jury was swayed by Michael's confession, and the fact that he had coerced his siblings into being murdered. Upon being convicted guilty of all allegations against him, Michael was sentenced to life in prison, without the possibility of parole. He is currently being held at the Lexington Correctional Center. In contrast, Robert is being held at the Joseph Hart Correctional Center. Robert attempted to attack prison employees, with a sharp instrument while incarcerated. Still, he was stopped by prison officers, who restrained him. Meanwhile, Michael kept a notebook in which he drew some exceedingly terrible drawings, which he used to tell the story of what he and his brother had done to each other. This plainly demonstrates, that there is something psychologically wrong with these two brothers. Still, psychiatrists who evaluated them, were unable to come up with an explanation for what was wrong with them. Crystal and Autumn, the only surviving members of the Bever family, were adopted by the same family, so they are at least able to spend time with one another. Although, the house where the horrific tragedy occurred was demonized on social media for years. The town of Broken Arrow was never truly free of the ghost of that night. Then two years later, the house was set on fire by unknown perpetrators. According to the department, crews from the Broken Arrow Fire Department responded to the incident at 3.30 a.m. When they came, the house was completely engulfed in flames, and it took them an hour to bring it under control. Robert Bever was eventually found guilty to all counts and was sentenced to life in prison, without the possibility of parole. Michael Bever's trial began on April 16, 2018, and on August 9, 2018, he was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole. Robert is currently serving in the Joseph Hart Correctional Center, and Michael is in the Lexington Correctional Center.